hello, we're back. Um, I've done a couple of videos just recently uh, about uh, one thing and another. And uh, I had planned to pop up to Jaguar Land Rover uh, tomorrow, actually, to uh, to have a couple of bits of minor warranty sort of things done. Uh, but well, it's Good Friday, apparently, and everybody's... <laughs> Everywhere is closed. Um, so uh, what I'm doing instead in this video is I'm going to change my tyres uh, again because it's we've had no winter really and I'm a bit disappointed to be honest because I, I bought these um, I bought these Nokian tyres uh, in a size that I didn't really want uh, two seventy five fifty five twenties which is a common truck size tyre but doesn't match the tires that are put on. I put on 265 uh 60 20s the the Cooper uh, whatever it was for the for the arctic trip. And uh and I would have liked a 265 60 in the Nokian because then my spare I wouldn't have had to swap my spare. I wouldn't have had to buy a spare and I didn't buy a spare. Uh why would I have to do that? I suppose I've just got back up a bit here. I'm to so the story goes that the new Land Rover products are very sensitive to tyre differences in diameter, no radius. Uh, and they advise that you don't do long distances on tyres that are mismatched. And what that means is that um, like a worn off-road tyre is quite a lot smaller in diameter than an unworn off-road tyre. And they don't recommend that you use your spare. You used to rotate them and they don't recommend that you do that anymore uh, because of the tyre differential, the size differential. Apparently, it's something to do with winding the differentials up and, and all that sort of messing about. And back in the day when I had, uh, when I had me, me Range Rover Classics, that weren't really a problem. Um, it certainly wasn't a problem out Land Rover, was there? put out your want on really. Um, different four wheel drive system, I suppose. Anyway, so what happens if you have mismatched tyres is it messes with the the computers, they get all confused and it, and it makes a mess of the job. And so I, I like to keep tyres that are the same size. So anyway, I wasn't really very enthusiastic about buying two 75, 55, 20s, but I had to because there weren't any winter tyres here of any other size really not available um and so i ended up buying them because the coopers that i bought as you've probably seen in the tire videos w weren't great on ice in fact they were terrible on well, not terrible that's not the right word but they weren't good on ice not all right in deep snow but not good on ice and 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 so we get a lot of ice here does see so i wanted some good for um uh for roads you know for family and, and all that lot. so i bought these uh, Nokians, uh, because some of my colleagues had talked to the chaps in Finland, Nokian, who'd made them, and they said they'd had no intention, they were having no intention of coming up with a 265 60 or any other sort of uh, 255 50, 255 65 or whatever the other size, the stock size tire is, they just weren't going to make any. Um, but that since turned out to be no, not right, they, they actually. I've started making a 265 60 RT3, I think they call it, an Okina RT3, a studded winter tyre, uh, a little bit more off-road biased, a little bit more sort of aggressive than the, the, than the Hakapalita 9 that they've got on, uh, and in my stock tyre size. But anyway, um, what I'm trying to say is I wish I hadn't bought these Nokians now because they've come out with the right size Nokian and I could have just bobbed that straight on and I didn't need them because the winter we didn't, we didn't really have much snow we only had about a week of it and that was that these are the sorts of things you have to put up with anyway it's, it's spring now uh <laughs> and we've not really had a second winter like we normally do in Alberta so it's time to change my tires the wheel nuts need this socket which is a 22 mil uh, this is my locking wheel nut uh, tool for the Land Rover wheels and this is the special tool because it's got its own sort of special spline affair in there, anti-theft spline and that's with the ones. Now this, uh, this is a torque, uh, what is it, torque shaft 
um 110 foot pounds 150 newton meters that's just on the upside they should be 100 pounds uh for the land rover and 110 does it and then obviously my guns uh and i use oh, this piece of wood here i'll show you how that works i use that on top of my jack to steady the body to stop it slipping on the jack itself and there's a jacking point just under the front and under the back and then uh under the bonnet and i'll show you later on there's another one sort of underneath i suppose it's a dust cover it's not really a rock guard but there's a, a dust pan cover that fits underneath to kind of stop ingress of dirt and stuff underneath the engine i suppose i could just try and show you that gun to while we go underneath here you'll notice won't you that i've taken my um uh guard off here so that in winter i can use my tow rec recovery eye uh, and if you look under there you can see that silver thing um i don't know what you'd call that but anyway that's uh that pan there is uh, part of the protection sound deadening and keeping clean of air and then that big uh lump there that you see uh, that is one of the jacking points for the land rover and there's another one at the other side if you can just look over there um you can also jack a number of people say off the wishbones i don't recommend it because the wishbones are slippy and prone to sliding off the jack so Unless you're in a sort of a, a nicky situation, the wishbones I'd stay away from. To a pinch, you could jack underneath that if you wanted to and lift the whole front end of the Land Rover, the, uh, the recovery eye. It's not intended for that, but if it'll pull the vehicle out, um, it'll, it's designed for uh, that kind of weight. Um, anyway, there you go, that's that. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll get it set up and then I'll show you how we go on. Okay, so I'm pretty set up here. I've got my block of wood. And underneath here is a, a bar uh, that you can feel with your hands. It just falls level with this sort of line and the split here, the end of it. And then forward of that is a jacking point. Now, you can see there's some marks on here from where I've had this before. And this is from my jack. So I'm going to use it in the same direction, so just so it's stable. Uh, I've got my tool here to remove the dust cap uh, or hub, which I'm going to do like this uh, and then here we've got uh, the the uh, the lug nuts and what I do is I just wind off uh, three of them so that there's two holding the wheel on just loosen them like that uh, it's not so bad these days because uh, because the nuts themselves, um, the, the machine can wind them off. But back in the day when you used to have a, you know, a, a proper bar, <laughs> you used to rock the vehicle every time you tried to crack them. Uh, and that rocking was a bit of a problem because uh, it used to obviously rock the jack as well. So if you did it while it was on the ground, if you cracked the nuts while it was on the ground, and you didn't have that problem with rocking the thing because the, the, the weight of the vehicle sort of protected you, if you see what I mean. Um, so now we're almost ready to go up. I have installed a, jock on that co a chock on that corner at the back and then on the opposite side at the front so that there's less rock. And now we're ready to jack up. Now jacking uh, is the bit that people get twitchy about. And the straight answer to the problem is... Um, jack carefully and progressively so i just make sure that the jack hits the right spot and then what you're jacking is right in the middle of the jacking crown what i call the jacking crown jacking plate on the jack itself and stand up to do it and that way you can get out of the way so i'm going to do this i'm probably going to have my back to you maybe i'll try and do it this way and um, basically just jack the vehicle up Now I haven't put this into off-road height and you can just hear the wheel sliding now one of the reasons that I use a trolley jack is because as you can see the wheels crawl underneath the car as I jack it up and that way the, the trolley jack isn't pulling the car or attempting to pull the car towards you the suspension will adjust itself uh, as the weight comes off it, it will sort of figure itself out. 
and there have been some concerns about uh, jacking it up and then opening the car door and the car trying to to steady itself which is a bit twitchy and that's one of the reasons you should always put this vertically so that it's not in the way and out of the way of the door so that if the vehicle does decide to come down or move it's only going to move this down and out of the way uh, and then whip off the other two nuts like this and you'll see the wheels just move slightly there I'm going to put these in my old cap so we don't lose them and all of these nuts are off and it's pretty safe and then you just whittle the wheel off now before I do that I'm just going to go and get my bar always carry one of these in the garage anyway and I'll show you why in a minute this one here is the rear right rear right 20 and that's going to go on front left that's a full rotation from back to front and from left to right so I'll just whip this tyre off you can do this any way you like but it's best to be safe so you can hold it somewhere out of the way that your fingers aren't going to get squished best to hold it like this if you can and then pull forwards or hold at the back hold at the front with your foot just to stop the tyre from sort of falling any further and then just give it a bit of a, a rock to make it free and then pull off now you noticed I put my foot underneath that just to lift it a little bit so that it doesn't fall off or catch the back plate or anything like that and then you can just roll the tyre out of the way and then we'll bob the next one on and this is the old tyre you have to be careful if these are directional tyres because the direction obviously needs to remain the same so when you rotate the tyres it's important you only rotate front to back and not side to side if that makes sense because the direction of the pattern uh, will alter and these tyres are non-directional there's no arrows on them and the pattern on the top is the same uh, if you have it this way or this way it makes no difference to the pattern um, and so these can go on anyway then I take my bar I have jacked this up a little farther than I needed to, further than I needed to, but these are slightly oversized. These are 33 inch and the other ones are 32s. So uh, I just roughly put it in position with me, me hip and me leg. Try not to bash the car because then you're making it a little bit unsteady. And then just use your bar to leave the tyre into place using your knee to stop it on the other side and then with the bar at the side of the tyre just rotate the tyre a little bit until the studs sort of line up a little bit with the holes and then just lift it up like that using your knee there you are straight on and then holding it with your hand just grab one of your studs put two in just to stop the wheel falling off keep your workspace clear so get rid of that find your other three nuts it's helpful to get your lock sockets or lock wrenches or whatever you want to call them locking tools out and all the paraphernalia you need get it out first that way you're not in and out of the car and you can get work done while while it's safe to do so uh, and then what i do is i whip off my lock nut and i've got another socket on the end of torque bar torque stick change direction check that you've got whatever strength you need on the gun just nip it up before you drop the car to the ground and then you can lower the car carefully by twisting this I usually just put my foot at the bottom of the jack so it doesn't come shooting back and catch me because there's a bit of weight on it 
and then it's your job to nip up these to the proper torque setting whatever that might be for your car now for me because i have the torque stick i can just wind this in until it makes the appropriate noise and the appropriate noise being not moving and there it is done i like to go in the old-fashioned way of opposites uh, when i tighten that's old school uh, i don't know they actually need to do that anymore the way you know these torque sticks are tight is that this lettering on the socket just stops moving this will keep moving a little bit because that's the point of it job done so that's one wheel and the others are exactly the same I've got a couple of bits of different things on in the garage right on bench I should mention this I've got um, uh, the laser lamp can bus affair that I'm going to try and screw in later tonight because it's only nine o'clock now and I'm good up until <laughs> about three or four in the morning Thank you very much for tuning in. Please do like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you all next time.